brothers and sisters. God is always new and never old. He is an all-inclusive God. No single name of God can represent all of God. So, as the ages pass, God changes his name. What? God's name cannot represent all of God. Jehovah is the perfect representation of all of God, and Jesus is an even more perfect expression of God. These are the facts acknowledged by Christianity for millennia. This is the foundation of our belief, and no one can deny right. it. Right. The names Jehovah and Jesus both can represent God in His entirety. No one can deny that. Jesus Christ is the proof that man can be saved through faith in God. If you deny God's name, then what right do you have to preach? Sister Lee, Sister Wong, just wait a moment. Be quiet, He Ping. You've betrayed the Lord. We don't want to listen to you anymore. Sister Lee, calm down. Please let them finish speaking first. Yes, calm Sister, yourself. let's hear some more. Brothers and sisters, whether God's names can represent God in His entirety cannot be decided by man. Let us look at what Almighty God says about it. Please turn to page 925. Almighty God says, The name of Jesus was taken for the work of redemption. So would he still be called by the same name when he returns in the last days? Would he still do the work of redemption? Why is it that Jehovah and Jesus are one, yet they are called by different names in different ages? Is it not because their work in these ages is different? Could a single name represent God in His entirety? In this way, God must be called by a different name in a different age, must use the name to change the age and represent the age. For no one name can fully represent God Himself. And each name can only represent God's disposition during a certain age and needs only to represent His work. Therefore, God can choose whatever name befits His disposition to represent the entire age. Could the name of Jesus, God with us, represent God's disposition in its entirety? Could it fully articulate God? If man says that God can only be called Jesus and may not have any other name because God cannot change his disposition, then such words are blasphemy. Do you believe that the name Jesus, God with us, can represent God in his entirety? God can be called many names but among these many names, there is not one which can encapsulate all that God has. There is not one which can fully represent God. And so, God has many names, but these many names cannot fully articulate God's disposition. For God's disposition is too rich and extends beyond the knowledge of man. The language of man is incapable of fully encapsulating God. One particular word or name is powerless to represent God in His entirety. So, can God take one fixed name? God is so great and holy so why do you not permit him to change his name in each new age? As such, in each age that God personally does his own work, he uses a name that befits the age to encapsulate the work that he does. He uses this particular name, one that possesses the significance of the age to represent his disposition in that age. God uses the language of man to express his own disposition. Oh, so that's it. 
There are a lot of mysteries to the changes in God's name. Yes, that passage speaks the truth. No one would dare say this except God himself. Right. The disposition of our God is so rich, no single name can fully represent him. Mm. Yes, yes, that's yes. right. God. God's disposition is so rich, sweet. and one name indeed can't fully represent God. God has so much wisdom in his words and deeds. These words are so stern. I've never heard anyone say these things before. Brothers and sisters, God is a wise and almighty ruler. He is so great, bountiful, and infinite. No single name could possibly represent God in all his entirety. In each age, God only does a part of his work and expresses part of his disposition. God has not expressed all that he has and all that he is. So, for each stage of God's work, he must use a specific name with age significance, which represents the work of that age and the disposition he expresses. This is the principle of God's work and the primary reason God changes his name. Since you say God's name in each age doesn't represent God in his entirety, then can you tell me what does God's name in each age mean? Sister Wong, the question you asked is important. It's very helpful for us to understand God. Today, Almighty God has given us the answer to this question. Everybody please turn to page 1202. Almighty God says, Jehovah is the name that I took during my work in Israel. And it means the God of the Israelites, God's chosen people, who can take pity on man, curse man, and guide the life of man. It means the God who possesses great power and is full of wisdom. Jesus is Emmanuel, and it means the sin offering that is full of love full of compassion and redeems man. He did the work of the age of grace and represents the age of grace and can only represent one part of the management plan. That is to say, only Jehovah is the God of the chosen people of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses, and the God of all the people of Israel. And so, in the current age, all the Israelites apart from the tribe of Judah worship Jehovah. They make sacrifices to him on the altar and serve him wearing priests' robes in the temple. What they hope for is the reappearance of Jehovah. Only Jesus is the Redeemer of mankind. He is the sin offering that redeemed mankind from sin. Which is to say, the name of Jesus came from the Age of Grace and existed because of the work of redemption in the Age of Grace. The name of Jesus existed to allow the people of the Age of Grace to be reborn and saved and is a particular name for the redemption of the whole of mankind. And so, the name Jesus represents the work of redemption and denotes the age of grace. The name Jehovah is a particular name for the people of Israel who lived under the law. In each age and each stage of work, my name is not baseless but holds representative significance. Each name represents one age. Jehovah represents the age of law and is the honorific for the God worshiped by the people of Israel. Jesus represents the age of grace 
and is the name of the God of all those who were redeemed during the Age of Grace. If man still longs for the arrival of Jesus the Savior during the last days, and still expects him to arrive in the image he bore in Judea, then the entire 6,000-year management plan would stop in the Age of Redemption and would be incapable of progressing any further. The last days, furthermore, would never arrive, and the age would never be brought to an end. That is because Jesus the Savior is only for the redemption and salvation of mankind. I took the name of Jesus for the sake of all the sinners in the age of grace. And it is not the name by which I shall bring the whole of mankind to an end. Those words are like a bright light. Is that really the word of God? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Look, we've never seen anything in the Bible like God's well, six thousand deviated year management from the Bible. plan. The Bible tells us that God's names are Jehovah and Jesus. That passage makes it clear that there are mysteries hidden in God's name. I've been reading the Bible for years and I've searched for God's name, but I never understood the mysteries of God's name. Now they're here saying all this. Lord, what is the truth of it? Brothers and sisters, the words of Almighty God explain to us the meaning of God's names that He takes in each age. In the age of law, God's name was Jehovah. This name represents the disposition God expressed to the people of that age, the disposition of majesty, wrath, curse, and mercy. At that time, in the name of Jehovah, God started His work in the age of law. He issued laws and commandments and formally led his newborn mankind to live on earth. He demanded they strictly obey the law and learn how to worship and magnify him. God's blessing and grace would lie upon whoever followed the law of Jehovah. Those who broke the law would be stoned to death or burned by heavenly fire. So, the Israelites under the law kept it faithfully and honor Jehovah's name as sacred, and live thousands of years under Jehovah's guidance till the end of the age of law. By the end of the age of law, people had become increasingly corrupt and sinful and were unable to obey the law. Everyone was in constant danger of punishment for breaking it. Therefore, with the name of Jesus, God began a new stage of work of redemption. He ended the age of law and initiated the age of grace, and he expressed the disposition of love and mercy. He laid his boundless grace upon man and finally was crucified to redeem man from sin. After that, man began to pray in Jesus' name, to worship Jesus' name as sacred, and to enjoy the forgiveness of God and his boundless grace. The name of Jesus exists to allow the people of the Age of Grace to be reborn and saved. Its meaning is the sin offering full of love and mercy that redeems people. The name Jesus represents God's redemptive work and also God's disposition of love and mercy. Brothers and sisters, in the previous two stages of God's work, we can see that the name God takes in each age holds representative significance. Each represents the work and the disposition which God expresses in that age. In the age of grace, if the Lord had been called Jehovah when he came, rather than Jesus, then God's work would have been stopped in the age of law, and corrupt mankind would never have gained God's redemption. In the end, they would have been condemned and punished for breaking God's law. When God comes in the last days, if he still had the name Jesus, then corrupt mankind would only receive salvation and forgiveness for their sins. They would never achieve holiness and enter God's kingdom. This is because the sins of men have been forgiven through Jesus' redemption. But their sinful nature still remains. They still often sin and have not been fully gained by God. Therefore, in order to save men out of sin completely, God is now doing a new work of completely 
purifying and saving men based on Jesus' work. And so, God's name must change.